This is my UBD Scientific Investigation Unit for grades 3 through 5. The desired results are that students will be able to independently use their learning to conduct a repeatable scientific investigation and be able to defend and present their outcomes using technology in an understandable representation. The science standards that it hits or covers is that students understand the processes used to investigate problems, design and conduct repeatable scientific investigations, defend arguments, understand processes that require integrity, logical reasoning, skepticism, openness, communication, peer review, and understand the environment contributes to the development of scientific knowledge for understanding scientific concepts and global issues. The net standards that it covers is that students will apply digital tools to gather, evaluate, and use information, plan strategies, locate, organize, analyze, evaluate, synthesize from a variety of sources, evaluate and select sources and digital tools appropriate to specific tasks, and process data and report results. And this final one is going to be through their final project. Now the students will understand that the tilt of the Earth's axis matters in regards to the weather. They'll also know that there is a process to inv investigate problems in science, so that's the scientific method. The questions that questions help to guide scientific discovery. And that data collection and recording are essential to support results, and that there are many ways to communicate information that is collected. Now, the essential questions that I have are, one, what causes the seasons and the changes in the weather, and that deals with your Earth's tilt. Why do we have scientific procedures? So they'll learn the importance of reliable, repeatable outcomes from experiments. Why is it important to ask questions, which will guide inquiry? How does data collection help us to better understand things and once again support results with this? And then the last one is how can you explain your findings? And so we're going to use technology and graphing and, and our final presentation for this as well as simulations. Students will know the scientific process and how to conduct a scientific investigation, how to defend and communicate their results, how to use technology to display their data collection, and they'll be skilled at conducting a scientific investigation, collecting important data to support their investigation, using technology to input data found and to create a presentable representation, as well as presenting and defending their findings to an audience. The evidence that I'm going to use are going to be logs that the kids are going to keep for a month-long recording of air and soil temperature at a weather station site that we will have on site, um, you know, probably near the playground for us. They're going to conduct research and several experiments and keep a record of each with a worksheet that I will provide or worksheets that I will provide and eventually they'll be able to learn to do it on their own and create illustrations and um, write in their cloud journals without actually having a worksheet but you know be able to fulfill all the different needs in regards to that. And then in the end, they're going to design an investigation with their personal questions to conduct research, create a hypothesis, test that hypothesis through experimentation, and then to analyze the data and communicate their findings through a Prezi presentation, which I will supply a Prezi rubric for. Now, other evidence that I'm going to use are the science journals with illustrations and citations. So I'll teach them how to properly cite, cite sources that they're going to use. Um, I've created a blog site for weekly discussions as well as their self-assessments. Um, we are doing concept mapping on Bubble Us and then of course personal and peer reviews at the very end after the final project um, or after even group activities. Then my teacher observation. Now our learning plan. Starting out with our learning plan before I actually get into this, like I said, they're going to keep a daily log. So they're going to have a science journal and they'll learn how to, you know, do their cloud journal and keep track of the weather. And, you know, some of it will be pasted in, but a lot of it they'll end up doing on their own on the paper form itself. Then we will just record that information at the GLOBE site and the kids will learn how to record their own data and this is where um, worldwide other teachers and schools are part of the GLOBE learning 
um, basically program and they are constantly importing data onto this site. So my, the kids will kind of get used to the site and be able to learn about all the different places around the world and what the weather is like for them as well. Then I have my Weebly site here where I've created a blog site for the, the students. I've marked down, you know, week one, week two, week three, week four discussions and the self-assessments that follow. So I have a different question for each week for discussion as well as you know a, a little bit more you know telling them to list their sites and then during their assessments they have a little bit of a rubric here for posting their assessment of themselves as well as um, their peers and so it goes down and, and deals with all of that then we move on to our first learning activity I will be reading to them the mystery of the missing hummingbird and they will do some predictions and connections in regards to that, learning about the scientific process or the scientific method. They'll learn about science journals and how to keep them. I'll post the essential questions on the wall so that the kids will constantly be able to go back to them and look at them. They'll look at the scientific method and see how you ask a question and you do your research, form a hypothesis, um, test your hypothesis, analyze your data, and then draw your conclusion and, and how it's a, a big circle and that you're constantly going back and refocusing your question or coming up with a new hypothesis if your conclusion didn't work out right. And so it, it starts them out on that process so that they know that that science isn't going to work every single time the way that you think it's going to, as well as not only are you going to conduct one experiment, but you need to do multiple experiments in order for you to prove or disprove what you are trying to prove or disprove. Then we'll go into our next, and that is what causes the seasons. And once again, we'll do the essential question. So this is the essential question that it addresses. I'll go over internet protocol reminder to make sure that the kids understand that you know they need to be appropriate when they are on the internet. I'll teach them how to cite their sources. And then I've listed on here the, the two websites that we'll use, that the kids will explore on. Um, one is very animated and has it so that you can move the, the planets around and it shows the different time of year that it would be for that specific location. And the other one is just showing you basically this here when winter, fall, and summer, and spring are in regards to the tilt of the axis of the Earth. Then we have why investigate the atmosphere, where we'll create a Google Doc list in the classroom so that the kids can get on there and, and see it any time that they would like to and you know, be able to use that in the future. They'll you know, continue to do their self-assessments and I'll really emphasize those questions because at the very end they have that research project where they're, or not research project, but their investigation where they're going to create their own investigation uh, regards in regards to their own question whatever they have that they're really interested in maybe they found a leaf and they're really curious why it looks the way it does then they can create a, a an investigation in regards to it so i have them write it all down in their journals so that eventually at the very very end they can go through and find the question that they really 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 are interested in uh, learning more about and of course the essential question is constantly coming up as, as well i'll always redirect them to the essential questions this is the first worksheet that they're going to do with the atmosphere investigation where, you know, I'll introduce them to the site and we'll take pictures of the north, south, east, and west and um, do latitude and longitude. We'll, you know, look at all the location, you know, around us, like the buildings and, and the foliage of vegetation, just everything that, that covers that specific site. Then we'll go into clouds and I'll read the cloud book by Tommy Dupola. Then I'll present to them my Prezi cloud presentation that I, I made just recently. I'll go through and, and talk about the different types of clouds and you know what they look like, the elevations, how high they are, um, and then I'll remind them of the essential questions and we'll go through and, and retouch on the blog because it's a weekly thing. We'll, every day we're going to be you know, making these cloud observations in our journals. So that's a daily thing that we'll be doing with the temperature as well here soon, as well as the questions that may come up. 
So then looking at our atmosphere investigation, this is the first side of the sheet and it actually goes into the different clouds. So it's really nice because it has pictures for them to look at and they can discover, oh yeah, that's what the sky does look like at this moment in time. And then on the back, you can see where it says, you know, no clouds, clear, isolated, scattered, broken, overcast. And, you know, we'll talk about all the different types of uh, weathers that we have and, and why they are. Then we'll go into science investigation number one where I will have them calibrate a thermometer and they'll be doing it actually in cold water. I, they could do it in hot water also, but for safety measures, I'm just going to have them put it in a glass of ice cold water and we'll actually do an investigation and see what happens. And of course, once again, they'll be doing several of them. So they'll have more than one um, glass with ice and thermometer in there and they're they're basically seeing if that thermometer is reaching at that right temperature and if it is then yes of course that's a great thermometer that that will work for our purposes but if not then it wouldn't so this is the first investigation worksheet and this is what they're going to be using for the second investigation as well so it just goes through the different question hypothesis experiment conclusion um, or I'm sorry, collection, um, analyzing, and then making your conclusion, did your, was your hypothesis correct? And of course, really drilling through the kid's head that, you know, yes or no is not correct for this. You have to say how it's correct or how it's incorrect. That's super important. Then of course, our scientific investigation number two, which is dealing with our actual um, weather station. We have our digital multi-day maximum minimal thermometer. We're going to take different readings for a week. And then, of course, we'll continue on throughout the month. But this will be your start. And then after that, we'll go to our journals so that we don't need the worksheet anymore. We'll actually be doing it on our own. So then we'll have our weather station, which inside you'll have um, one that goes into the soil and one that's in the air. And then your water or your rain gauge as well to keep track of that. Then we'll have our insulation investigation. We'll start with what soils supply. And I created this in Bubble Us, which um, you know I can do that in front of the kids while they're there. I'll just put soil in the middle and then I'll say, okay, what is soil? What, what is soil supply? And, you know, one of the kids might say, oh, it supplies air. And then I'll just pop a bubble out there for you. Oh, you know, you get water from our nutrients or um, minerals from it or the animals. Um, the soil supply is life for the animals because they really need that, you know, microorganisms, all sorts of different things. Then, of course, you have your insulation worksheet, which will go through and do an experiment with three different tests all at the same time. And then um, a control one, which is just air. So in regards to their insulation, though, um, they're going to be gathering the, the different insulation. They get to choose what type of insulation they want to use. And then um, they'll place it in there. They'll place a little container in there with a cube of ice and some water and then put a lid on it. And then there's a hole at the top they can put their thermometers through and then they can check it every half an hour. Then we have the final project, which once again, essential questions is, is pointed out and how those are really important. And there were, we've addressed all of those now. So they are going to do their own scientific investigation and they're going to have this rubric in order to use, they have to use their own question. I've given them resources on the side in order to help them out and figure out which type of resource they want to use. They have some blog sites here as well. Um, it addresses all the different standards within here and they have a total of 100 points at the very bottom. Then, of course, you know, our goal is for them to be able to present this to the class um, in a, a manner just like this, where they can get up in front of everyone and they can do a Prezi presentation right there in class for everyone to see and present it to them either like this or, you know, so that people can just watch it or they can do it personally where they're actually talking while they're pushing the button in front of the entire classroom. And that is my presentation. I hope you've enjoyed it.